In this lecture, we'll learn how to create multi-pass rendering. Before we start the tutorial, let's first understand what is multi-pass rendering and what is the use of that. Multi-pass rendering is rendering your image in multiple layers, meaning that you will not create a single render of an image. Instead, you will create a beauty pass, a reflection pass, and a highlight pass, and probably a shadow pass, and you will have all these images in multiple layers. When you combine all these different layers, you will get the final result. Now, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to split our single image into multiple passes? Now, imagine you have completed your rendering. Let's say you have got 2,000 frames that you have finished rendering. And after finishing the rendering, you just find out that you have got a little too much of reflection and you want to reduce it. In that case, in traditional methods, you will have to re-render the 2,000 frames once again from the beginning, which will take a lot of rendering time. But in this method, what we will do is we will take the color information separately, we'll take the reflection separately, we'll take the highlights separately, and we will composite all these things in After Effects. So the advantage is if you find that if your reflection is a little too much, you can just reduce the visibility of that particular layer in After Effects. You don't have to re-enter the entire uh, image sequence. So here is just three examples that is beauty pass, reflection and highlight. Like this we can create so many other layers and it takes the same time to render all these different passes and puts them into different files so that we can finally combine them in After Effects. So in this example we will just create three different render passes. Let's see how to create these render passes. I'll go to render settings. First change the rendering engine to mental ray. Let's change the format to TGA Targa. I will render just a single frame right now and I'll choose the camera that I want. I'll choose perspective here and my render preset is 720HD. I have set up lights so I'll just disable this default light that I have. Let's go to passes and this is where we actually create the render passes. First we have to create passes and then we will have to associate them into our scene. Now sometimes you will notice that these buttons that you have here may not be visible in your window depending on what kind of window size you have. Sometimes when Maya opens up it might show like this so that your buttons are hidden. So make sure that you drag it out to make your buttons visible. So let's click on this first one to create render passes. These are all the different types of passes that we can create. So I'm going to create just three of them. First one is ambient occlusion. Second one is diffuse without shadows. Third one is shadows. So we've got lots of other passes that you can create. Depending on the needs, you can have reflections and all those other things. Beauty without reflection and refraction. So I'm choosing all, only these three because ambient occlusion will give us information about darker areas which will uh, increase the contrast of the image. Diffuse the actual color of the uh, scene. And shadow will give us shadow information which we can manipulate. So I'll cre click create and close. So we have created three different passes. Now we have to associate all these passes to our Maya scene. So let's click on this button by selecting all of them. So now we have associated all these three passes. Let's go to features. Since we are adding up ambient occlusion, we have to turn on ambient occlusion here. If you want to modify ambient occlusion's values, go to indirect lighting, scroll down, at the end you should be able to find ambient occlusion. Here we can increase or decrease the number of rays depending on how much quality you want. We can make an experiment to find out how much quality we're getting in our ambient occlusion and depending on that we can either increase it or decrease it. Keep in mind having a higher rays will also take more time to render and it will result in better quality. So let's minimize that. 
uh, we have to make sure one other important thing that is our image location I have set this as my uh, rendering path so it goes inside image and office exterior TG, uh, office exterior texture .tga. let's go ahead and choose rendering and go to render batch render let's go to options nothing else to be done there I'll hit render. So what this will do is it will render in mental ray and it will give us all these different passes. Okay now that our rendering is completed let's go and check out the files. So we have our ambient occlusion, we have our diffuse with no shadow, master beauty and shadow. So let's check these files. Master Beauty is the one that will have, that is your final render. So that is like it has got shadows, reflections, everything. Okay. So we will not use this because we will take all these things part by part and we will combine them. So Diffuse with no shadows, this has got just the color information, nothing else. So you can see that there's no shadows, nothing else. I'll close this. Let's look at the shadow. So this has got just the shadow information. Uh, you might get be wondering what this means. Uh, the brighter areas are actually the shadows and the darker areas are, are the non-shadows. We can combine this in After Effects to get the desired result. And finally AO that is ambient occlusion this basically has the information about the darker areas so it's basically a grayscale image where you can see that the darker areas are actually going to be black in color and brighter areas will be white in color. Now let's open up After Effects. Okay, so let's import these files so that we can create the composition based on the file size. I'll double click. Images, okay. So I'll get all these things except the Master Beauty. I'll hit Open. I'll, I'll get it uh, ignored because I don't want any transparency alpha channel to come. Let's keep Ignore, Ignore, there it is. So we got all these things. First I'll get the Diffuse without shadow. I'll click and drag it inside so it will automatically create the composition for us that's wonderful so this is just the color information nothing else and on top of that I will start to add my shadow so that will be shadows here I click that and drag it now for the shadow we have to modify the blending mode so I've got the blending modes here if you don't uh, have it here you can right click choose columns and there you can add modes okay so because by default when you open After Effects it won't show up here you can right click go to columns and get modes so for shadows I will change the blending mode to difference okay so now you can see that immediately it has just added us the shadows that is needed okay so that this adds up lots of shadow information we can compare uh, without the effect and with the effect okay so that makes it look nice adding up the shadow now let's add in the ambient occlusion bring it inside okay so the ambient occlusion is on top of that for ambient occlusion we will change the blending mode to multiply so there you go so you can compare without the ambient occlusion with the ambient occlusion now it brings it a little bit of contrast which makes it more realistic now if you think that any of this is a little too much you can just go to the transparency by pressing T it opens up opacity so you can just drag this a little bit down if you want to reduce the ambient occlusion bit or if you want to reduce a bit of shadow you can press that press T and then you can bring down the shadow so you can have less of a shadow if you don't want to have too much of shadow you can just do that so without shadow with shadow you can also check without shadows just the ambient occlusion so even as you can see just the ambient occlusion will give us a better result compared to without ambient occlusion so it basically finds the darker areas and keeps them dark so that's adding up the shadows